Hello everyone. Well, here I am standing in the same position I always seem to be standing on the stairs. And what do you guys see? It's a wall. And it goes all the way up to the ceiling. And I'm going to go really fast past the door. But there's the window over there. My computer's still in that spot along with that huge pile of stuff. Sorry for the pause. I'm walking down the stairs. Can't do two things at once. <laughs> so now I'm going to take you inside. But before I do, I'm just going to talk a little bit about my studio. Now my studio is uh, built into the house. So we put up this wall and, and the window and door. The window is so that I can watch TV or at least feel like I'm part of the future family room um, while things are going on down here. And we're hoping to have... Um, uh, a small table that will be on the on this side of the window um, with a couple of bar stools kind of to be interactive from both sides. Now I've had a couple of comments about my studio um, when I say building it from the ground up and people say you know that's nice but they they couldn't really afford it or or you know they can't um, justify spending the money and to be quite honest, I'm not spending a lot of money. Uh, we had to put the wall up and we had to do the ceilings because we want to finish the basement. So that was automatic. Uh, we do have future plans for this basement that will not include my studio, but that's further down the road. So as far as my studio goes, um, again, I'm a thrifty person. I like going to antique shops and thrift sh uh, shops and uh, doing things myself instead of buying expensive pieces. So I'm going to take you through this whole process of how much I spend, um, how things are progressing, and how I make things myself to, to uh, reduce the costs of putting this room back together. And I will say one thing that when we were in our old house in Manitoba, we had uh, a week-long garage sale and we sold off lots of stuff. And we almost made, I would say, close to $3,000 in our sale just uh, selling stuff that we couldn't take with us. And so some of that money I get to spend on my studio because some of the pieces were from my studio, like tables and cupboards and stuff. And then some of the money was um, made by selling off some of our household things, uh, again, uh, furniture and dishes and stuff that I'm going to slowly replace here. But I don't like buying anything new. Um, we've always repurposed or reused as much as we can. Uh, I guess appliances is something I do like new uh, because then you have the warranties and you, you pretty much know they're going to last long. But with furniture, you want to have the option of changing your mind in a couple of years. So to uh, commit yourself to buying expensive furniture um, doesn't allow you to make those choices in the future. So with us, again, we've always repurposed and reused everything. So I just want to share that so that people who've made those comments about spending money to put their studio together, I'm not going to be spending a lot of money. And you will see that as we go along. But now I should take you inside. We've already done a few things inside. So I'm going to take you in. Here we go. I have to remember where the light switch is. Here it is. Okay, so starting with the ceiling, isn't that gorgeous? It's just plain old tile ceiling and I have four pot lights and then I have one light in the center that will eventually be the host to my chandelier because every craft room has to have a chandelier. Not a chandelier that's going to cost thousands of dollars, but one that I'm going to make myself and share how I make it with you. So over here on this wall... We have put up these screens with loaf pans. Um, this was something I had in my store before when I had a store in Manitoba. And the reason I put them there is they're over the register so that there's nothing going to be in the way of the register for heat or as a fire hazard. And while I'm down here, look at these beautiful floors. Tom painted these. They are done in um, kind of a uh, slate gray. 
it's hard to tell they're very shiny right now and we've had a few cats walk through them um, because it's almost impossible to barricade the door and the window so over here now th these these were made with loaf pans that I picked up um, at thrift shops at garage sales if I paid 50 cents a piece for them that's about it so you can see that this shelving isn't made very expensively but it will be able to hold things like tags and postcards and little bits of ephemera that I want to use for my bookmaking. This shelf here is a cube shelf. I just bought this off of Facebook, off of from a Facebook seller here in the area. Um, I paid forty dollars for this shelf. Now I'm going to have to take it all apart because if you look at it, some of the boards are showing the rough side, like right here. Um, they kind of put this um, horse before the cart, I think would be a good way to explain it. Uh, so some of the boards have to be turned around because they've, they've done them opposite. But I'll take that whole thing apart. So this is going to host um, 8 and a half by 11 paper. It's going to be raised off the ground. I have some wooden crates that I'm going to uh, put underneath it to raise it off the ground. So it's because um, I don't want my paper way down on the bottom there. Uh, but this is the start of my paper section. Now, in this corner way over here is a shelf that I bought. It has beautiful doors, which there's the doors right there. Um, they're like a shutter type door. And that is also going to go, I hope I'm not making you dizzy, but that's also going, this, going into this corner on this wall. So this is going to be my whole paper section. And then over here on these two blank walls is where I'm going to have my fabrics, laces, trims, and sewing stuff. And then that is my sewing table there. This electrical box that you see up on the wall, Tom is going to cover it with kind of a wooden cover that's quite decorative that we will be able to, uh, I'll be able to put stuff on it for display, but it'll hide all the ugliness there. Um, not quite sure what's going on in that corner yet, but you can see I have my funky furniture that I bought. Now this, I will say, I spent a little bit of money on. I spent almost $300 with the taxes, um, but I just fell in love with it. And so that comes out of my budget. And I will probably put this in my she shed when we have a chance to build my she shed. Uh, but for now, it will be in my studio so I can sit and have tea or coffee with somebody or a glass of wine. Um, maybe we have a little mini class going on and we want to take a break and just chit chat. Uh, this will be where we do it. Um, above, the win above the chaise is a window here and you can see our car and you can see the bay outside. It's a very rainy, wet day today. Um, one of these windows, the one on the right, I think is the one we're going to use. This one um, is going to be an open um, screened in catwalk for the cats to walk. Uh, it'll go up under the deck and go along the whole length of the deck, which is 30 feet. And then eventually we will have it go out to the trees in the yard and then come back again. But for now, we're just going to make it so that it goes around the deck just because it's safe for the cats instead of them going outside. I worry about the highway outside, so I don't really want them out there. Um, you know, they're not used to fast cars. The, we used to live at an end of a three mile road, so we didn't have the traffic. So this way, um, uh, I feel that they'll be safe. They get to go outside and uh, run around and then be part of my studio as well. There will also be some different areas in the studio that the cats can freely play on. And, um, Ratatouille has already confiscated this chair and if you scratch on that chair while I'm watching and while everybody else is watching, we're going to have to have a big talk. Oh, but he's just going to look cute for you. So that's Ratatouille Stefan, in case you didn't know him. We also call him Baby because he is a big baby. So as I said, this shelf is going to move to that other corner. Now I didn't mention and I should mention I paid $50 for this shelf. I'm not going to paint it. I... I think the natural wood looks fine. This is going to host all of my 12 by 12 papers, as well as those um, plastic containers that hold 12 by 12 paper that you get at Michael's. 
Um, so those will be on the bottom and then um, I may use this to hold my cutters, uh, my, my um, paper cutters and a few other tools. Uh, still undecided on that, but you will get to be every part of that process. So yes, I spent $50 on the shelf. Again, it's out of the same budget, uh, but it certainly is within um, uh, my plan and doable, certainly doable. So this is the window. If you look outside now, <laughs> you can see my daunting task ahead of me. Uh, I'm not sure if I should cry now or lay down until the feeling passes as Heidi, my, my dear friend would say, just lay down until the feeling passes. But eventually this wall of stuff will be gone and put away in my studio and it'll be step by step. So again, you will get to see the process as I'm going along. Um, a little unnerving, but I'll get to it. So then over here, this is going to be where I have, um, right in this area, a desk that I, I can sit at, like I said, and look out the window and be part of the family. Um, and then over here, I'm going to build some kind of um, tool system. I don't know yet, but I have two more of these loaf pans. I thought I might incorporate those in the wall, um, but still undecided. Uh, I'll wait and see as I unpack things. And then next to that, I have these two shelves that Tom had made for my store and I demanded to take these with me. I love these shelves so much. They're not very deep. Um, they're only about uh, two and a half, maybe three inches deep. You can see my finger there. And my plan is for at least one of them to host, uh, and they're floor to ceiling, like from there all the way down to the floor, which you can't really see right now, but um, my plan is for at least one of them will host all of my wooden stamps. I have a beautiful collection. I have been collecting for at least the last 10, 15 years. And it's a shame to put them in boxes and out of sight and out of mind. And I find that with my acrylic stamps, because they don't have that wooden block, you don't get to see them. And so I'm constantly flipping through my acrylic stamps to find them. But I'm working on a... Uh, catalog system but for now um, my my uh, happy spot is going to be filling that uh, shelf with all of my lovely wooden stamps and some of them are big so it, they would fit on these bigger shelves and then some of them are small and I would stack them up I may use the lower shelves at the bottom for storing things like inks or um, ink refills that type of stuff but I really want to focus on my my uh, wooden stamps and if they all fit on the one I'm, I'm sure they will but no nah, not a hundred percent but I'm sure they will then I will use this second shelf here for jars of doodads and when I say doodads like I have gems and stones and um paper flowers uh, that I would all of these things I would put into glass jars um, so that I can have a visual, um, something uh, inspirational to look at, as well as um, be able to quickly see what I have. I'm not fond of plastic containers, so as much as I can use glass, whether it's glass jars or wine glasses or sealer jars, um, that'll be how I host those types of items. So going on to this corner here, I'm still undecided, um, but I think I'm going to do all of my beads, uh, my beads and my jewelry making supplies. Um, and that would again be this type of shelving, but it'll be a little bit deeper so that I can have bigger jars of beads and everything by color. Um, I have a lot of beads because I make uh, tassels, I make jewelry, I make window charms, um, I make Christmas decorations with beads. So I am forever collecting beads to make uh, window uh, curtains, which will be on these two windows. I'm going to have um, probably reds and oranges and golds, uh, some yellow. That's the kind of colors I want for this room. So, so yes, I have lots of beads and lots of bead beading supplies, things like cords and 
uh, wire for doing uh, bracelets, like the uh, piano wire, and uh, different gauges of wire for uh, incorporating into the beads. There's also the findings. There's tools. Um, I probably will put a small table here, but that's still undecided as to what I'm going to do with that. Um, and then this space is, right now it's kind of free space. I don't know what I'll put here yet, but I know I have the stuff to put here anyway, re regardless. I have Christmas decorations. I have flowers. So still undecided, but this is where I'm at right now. And I thought I would share this with you just so you get an idea of what I'm doing. And hopefully in the next little while, you'll see some progress. Thanks for watching with me. And if you enjoy this, just hit the subscribe button and keep uh, stay tuned for more um, episodes of how I put my studio together. Thanks everyone. Have a good day. Bye for now.